So valvular heart disease, well, if we take the heart as a house, um, the valves in the heart are the doorways between the rooms of, of the heart. And what can happen, mainly as we get older, uh, is that they can start to fail and they fail in two ways. One is they either get stiff and uh, the more difficult to open, or they get a little bit floppy so that they don't close properly and blood goes backwards as opposed to goes forwards. And the most common thing is as we get older and have an older population that this starts to develop. In the past, it used to be rheumatic fever that was a big driver, but as that um, disease entity improved that, uh, and the treatment improved that has become less. Um, there are other things that you could be born with valves that are more prone to have uh, problems. And sometimes you can have other conditions that then influence the valve, such as having a heart attack that then affects the way the heart works and the valves move. Um, and so the, the, the valves are an integral component of the heart that control the direction of the blood. And uh, as if they're not functioning well, then they, they can make the heart work less efficiently and working less efficiently gives you symptoms. The most common symptom is breathlessness, but it can be palpitations, uh, feeling your heart racing, feeling lightheaded or fainting, um, or having chest discomfort. A lot of the time we react to valvular heart disease by your symptoms. So if you're getting symptoms of, as I mentioned, breathlessness or chest discomfort or dizziness, lightheadedness or palpitations, one of the investigations during that process may be to do uh, an ultrasound scan of the heart. And the ultrasound scan will show the valve and how the valves are working. Um, if we take a step forward, uh, backwards even, uh, is that the first thing when a doctor examines you is to listen to your heart on a stethoscope. And often that can show some signs. There's been a little bit of challenges of that over the COVID period where the contact with doctors has become less. And so this is really important that we try and uh, overcome this because the examination is what's bringing um, the diagnosis forward. And sometimes we can miss things. I guess if you have a family history of uh, your parents or relatives having valve problems, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have that yourself, but that could sometimes be related if it were something that could run in generation. But again, that's a rarer entity. Um, the more usual way that valves pronounce is as we get older, um, they're failing for more or less age or any other um, uh, illness that may have uh, put some strain on them. This is a more holistic approach, I think, and it's the general healthy lifestyle um, to avoid other things that could provoke it, for instance. So what do I recommend in general to keep a healthy heart is to avoid the big risk factors such as smoking, um, to exercise, exercise, exercise. Um, 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise a day um, has been shown to be beneficial. Um, and this will then help to keep your blood pressure lower, your cholesterol lower, uh, your sugars lower. And um, eating a healthy diet, five, six, seven different types of fruit and vegetables a day, oily fish like salmon and mackerel a couple of times a week, uh, generally a low salt diet as we have too much salt in our diet already and a generally low cholesterol diet and these in general keep the heart healthy um, which hopefully um, will keep your your valves healthy as well so um, valvular heart disease can be life-threatening uh, particularly if it's, um, I usually categorize problems with the valve as mild, moderate, or severe. Usually we don't do anything if it's mild and moderate. If it's severe, then we consider doing things. And when it gets to severe, that's when it can cause problems. It can make the heart fail, for instance. It can make the heart slow down or, or stop working at times. Uh, and there are lots of things we can do for the valves. Um, but these are usually 
in the terms of changing or repairing the valve, depending on the valve. Um, and that can be uh, via open heart surgery, for instance. It can be minimally invasively like what I do. Um, and uh, other times it can be instead of changing a valve, but repairing it. So I guess the most effective treatment is not to have it in the first place. Um, but if it does develop, and it may not be any fault of yourself, but just how your anatomy is or how, how things develop, is that the natural progression is for it to get worse. But what we want to do is do it at a timely fashion when you need it. So if you've got a valve that is working well, although there is mild or moderate impairment, but it's not affecting the way the heart functions, then waiting longer to that um, sweet spot of when to intervene is, is best. And uh, as I say, we can replace them uh, and sometimes we can repair them. And that seems to cure the problem.